Hello and welcome back to the Center for Critical and Cultural Theory. My name is Dr. Roger K. Green. This is a contextualized reading for Book 23 of Homer's Odyssey, uh, titled The Great Bed. This is part of our ongoing class on Homer and the Critique of Western Civilization. Uh, book 22 was the climactic chapter that, of course, the text has been building up to the entire time since the beginning we knew what was going to happen and now uh, we descend into the denouement or uh, falling action <laughs> according to um, Aristotle's terms um, uh, uh, of, of thinking about narrative anyway uh, and so we're we're gonna see the reconciliation of Penelope and Odysseus here uh, so um, Eurycleia is sent up um, to uh, wake up Penelope um, now that all has been um, accomplished in the hall. Um, remember, we had fire and brimstone or sulfur that was burned for purification. Uh, um, Odysseus has killed his enemies. He's rounded up the people who were disloyal to them and executed them. Um, <clears throat> And then we get the very common back and forth where somebody says something. Um, uh, Euryclea tells her that Odysseus is home and the immediate response is disbelief, right? So that kind of dial that dialectic push back and forth, which, which allows for some drama. Um, and we get a repeat of the same things. Destroy, I call that town. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, the nurse says, never, dear child, I'd never mock you. No, it's not. It's all true. He's here. Odysseus, he's come home. I Just as I tell you, he's the stranger they all manhandled in the hall. Telemachus knew he was here for days and days, but he knew enough to hide the father's plans so he could pay tribute those vipers, could pay those vipers back in kind. Um... Penelope's heart bursts into joy. She leaps from the bed, her eyes gleaming, streaming tears. Um, and she says, please give me the whole story. If he's really home again, just as you tell me, how did he get those shameless suitors in his clutches? And Eurycleia says, I have no idea, right? <laughs> I don't, um, because I wasn't there to see it. Um, she says, we crouched in terror, a dark nook of our quarters, all of us locked tight behind those snug doors till your boy Telemachus came and called me out. His father rushed him there to do just that. And then I found Odysseus in the thick of slaughtered corpses. Uh, there he stood, and all around him, over the beaten floor, the bodies sprawled in heaps, lying on one another. How it would have thrilled your heart to see him, splattered with bloody, bloody filth, a lion with his kill. And now they're all stacked at the courtyard gates. He's lit a roaring fire. He's purifying the house with cleansing fumes, and he sent me here to bring you back to him. Now, a couple of things I just want to notice in this passage, and because I um, have been, you know, thinking about this in terms of, of our relation to, to to ideas of Western civilization, to aesthetics, to politics. Um, uh, last book I mentioned, you know, the tendency in, in my current country in the United States for there to be these um, uh, uh, mass shootings at high schools. So, you know, like why, like why are like children, not even just high schools, but even elementary schools, but, but, but the children are the targets of these people who lock them into rooms and, and kill them. Why are the children the enemy? And, but, but, but the, the, the methodology, the tactic, um, is definitely something that um, uh, um, we can see back in the, this, this book, right? right? And we know that it's all about revenge. It's this, this way of um, displaying and illustrating revenge. And of course, it's like oftentimes a young shooter, um, oftentimes white, but not always white um, shooter. Um, <clears throat> Uh, I'm going into classrooms and 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 shooting at innocence and, and, and from an older person's perspective uh, um, the the mistakes that people make in their 
are capable of making in their late teens and early 20s when they have adult bodies but they do not know very much about the world and um, uh, what kinds of torment must be going on uh, uh, in in these um, perpetrators heads right which is to take a, a bit of a sympathetic approach um, uh, um, I, th I think part, perhaps maybe because I'm, I'm of my age I'm getting older I I want to understand how and why what 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 goes through people's heads to to do something like this but also what goes head through the heads of like p police who won't stop a shooter right who won't go in as we've seen recently and uh most recently in in the video that i'm making right now most recently in texas in the united states where where the the police sort of stood by <clears throat> and watched all this happen um what i want to draw our attention to is the familiarity not just the fact that we've gotten used to something like school shooters since Columbine or something like that in our culture and it becomes kind of part of the media noise unless there's something exceptionally gory about it. Um, it's the aesthetics of um, the way that the criminal act happens. It's an iteration or a reiterated thing. It repeats itself over and over again. This is something that violence does. Why does it take that particular form over and over again right why is that like why are schools not just schools the target but generally like that's a repeated thing too we could talk about that um, but also this form of rounding people up gathering them together and then executing all of them <clears throat> along with that the repeated imagery here is what i want to draw our attention to um, uh, if we are going to valorize Western civilization, Western culture, the aesthetics of violence in this text are part of the texture of that cultural makeup. And I want to just be very bold faced like, and, and, and just l like look at it clearly. And so there's this image of Odysseus here standing like like and, and 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 it's not like like Yuri Clea is happy about this. Right. There should be very clear about this it's not like well it was we got it done i mean he had to it was necessary it was, it's not none of that it's not that it is oh you if you could have just seen him right if there's excitement here and that drives this telling of the story um and what we get because she didn't see it in her own with her own eyes um we get an image a poetic image um, uh, and then I found Odysseus in the thick of slaughter corpses. There he stood, there he stood, and all around him, over the beaten floor, the bodies sprawled in heaps, lying on one another. How it would have thrilled your heart to see him, splattered with blood, filthy, a lion with his kill. He's lit a roaring fire, he's purifying the house with cleansing fumes, and he sent me here to bring you back to him. Follow me down, so now, after all the years of grief, you too can embark loving hearts along the road to joy. Look, your freedoms put off so long, come true at last. He's back alive, home at his hearth, and found you, found his son still here, and all those suitors who did him wrong. He's paid them back. He has right in his own house. <clears throat> um, and so it, we can see that there are lots of moments in the end of this text, and I mean throughout the whole epic as well, but like I've, I've often commented on the cinematic qualities of the text. Um, but that image, the bloody image of the, of the hero um, standing amidst fallen bodies covered in blood. Um, <clears throat> Uh, Penelope then breaks in and she's guarded you know, this is always part of her character circumspect Penelope um, hush dear woman don't laugh don't cry in triumph not yet you know how welcome the sight of him would be to all the head in the house and to me most of all and the son we bore together but the story can't be true not as you tell it no it must be a god who's killed our brazen friends right so Delete, disbelief coming in but with the sort of praise like the god the stranger was in the 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 god was in the stranger 
Um, and then we get reassurance from from uh, Yuri Clea and a reference to the scar again. The scar is always the sort of recognizing um, mark um, for actual Odysseus. Um, uh, and you know, Penelope it, it still doesn't quite believe her, but um, she says, "I don't know." You know, like. Uh, Deep as you are, my friend, you'll find it hard to plumb the plans of the everlasting gods. All the same, let's go and join my son so I can see the suitors lying dead and see the one who killed them. So she still doesn't quite believe. Um, uh, and then we get um, powerful images of um, Odysseus here as they come upon him. There he sat leaning against the great central column, his eyes fixed on the ground, waiting, poised for whatever words his hardy wife might say when she caught sight of him. A long while he sat in silence, numbing wonder filled her heart as her eyes explored his face. One moment he seemed Odysseus to the life, the next, no, he was not the man she knew. A huddled mass of rags was all she saw. Really, really wonderful moment, um, these moments. I, um, um, I, I, I believe, again, cinematic on an, the epic scale. I mean, this is like the definition of, of, of epic, but this um, phasing in and out of recognition, uh, I think is something wonderful that the poet does here. Um, and Telemachus breaks in and, and, and kind of rebukes his mom, you know, like, like, what are you, you're being cruel. Why don't you embrace him? Um, you know, what other wife could have such an unbending spirit holding back from her husband? Um, and, um, she says that we have secret signs, right? That must be given. And, um, Odysseus smiles and because he knows what she's talking about and he sends Telemachus away. Um, so that they can reveal their the signs in secret. Um, uh, before or as he sends Telemachus away, he um, notes an intention and notes a plan. Remember last book, in the last contextualized reading, I was emphasizing intentionality, right? Um, I'm in emphasizing intentionality because of uh, the ideas of, of courts of justice and because there are what's hovering about all of this stuff is something like like that we might think of today in terms of war crimes um, and justice right like like what, what what is at stake here is thinking about you know like to what extent Odysseus's actions are just in our minds and hearts in the 21st century um, uh, Clearly, in ancient Greek society, and, and and Zeus being you know meting out this kind of justice, clearly there is a value, an ideology that's being structured here by the text, um, in terms of their pantheon from that time. Um, to what extent that is embedded or lurking as the kind of princess in the pea, like the pea underneath the mattresses, you know, of Western civilization or something like that, a flawed sense of justice, maybe, I don't know. This is all stuff that is, 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 you know, open to be thinking about, you know, and in, in further discourse on this, um, and why I think it's necessary to be thinking about Western civilization, <clears throat> uh, this way. Um, uh, but again, this is just, just to note, like, the, this that there are plans that Odysseus has. He doesn't just get revenge in the heat of the moment, right? He doesn't just go crazy exactly. Um, he does. He there's deliberation here, right? And in deliberation and in law, that shows intent. That shows premeditation, right? Um, so here we go. <laughs> Uh, leave your mother out of, um, here in the hall to test me as she will. Uh, she soon will know me better. Now because I'm filthy, wearing, wear such grimy rags, she spurns me. Your mother still can't bring herself to believe I am her husband. But you and I put our heads together. What's our best defense when someone 
kills a lone man in the realm who leaves behind him no great band of revengers still to still the fl killer flees goodbye to, to kin and country right we saw this happen with um um, um the stranger that telemachus took in right on his boat the seer but we brought down the best of the island's princes the pillars of ithaca weigh it well i urge you um there's going to be avengers there's going to be out people out here um that are going to want to avenge the deaths of, of all the people that we've just slaughtered so here's odysseus's plan i think it's best first go and wash and pull fresh tunics on and tell the maids in the hall to dress well too and let the inspired bard take up his ringing lyre and lead off for us all a dance so full of heart that whoever hears the strains outside the gates a passerby on the road a neighbor on roundabout will think it's a wedding feast that's underway no news of the suitor's death must spread through town till we have slipped away to our own estates our orchard green with trees there we'll see what winning strategy Zeus will hand us then. Um, so, I mean, a couple of things to mention here is like, so they're rich to begin with, but they also have country estates. I think this kind of idea of what it means to be rich, um, uh, you know, feeds all the way into English culture, well into modernity, right? Um, Quentin Skinner has a really great series of, of lectures called Liberty Before Liberalism, and he very much talks about like the, the kind of um, uh, country estate gentleman um, that we know so well from English literature and, and legal and political discourse um, um, throughout the colonial era. Uh, um, so that, that, that kind of desire that's, that's cultivated through literary life is, it, it's kind of mimicry, right? It's a kind of mimesis of, of what, um, is, is presented as the ideal form of, of being really, truly noble here. Um, <clears throat> uh, and then, so, so they put on this party you know, so that people outside can can hear it and think like, oh, Penelope must have gotten married. Then we get um, an image of uh, Odysseus dressing. Uh, um, so, as a ma and a nice simile, as a master craft craftsman washes gold over beaten silver, a man, the god of fire and queen. Um, uh, Athena trained in every fine technique and finishes off his latest effort handsome work so she lavishes splendor over his head and shoulders now he stepped from his bath glistening like a god and back he went to the seat that he had left and facing his wife declared strange woman so hard the gods of olympus made you harder than any other woman in the world what other wife could have have a spirit so unbending holding back from her husband home at last for her her um after bearing 20 years of brutal struggle come nurse make my bed i'll sleep alone she has the heart of an iron beast um and penelope counters back so there's a bit of playing here i think between between the lovers um excuse me um there's a bit of playing and she counters right back strange man wary penelope said i'm not so proud so scornful nor am i overwhelmed by your quick change you look how well i know the way he looked setting sail from ethica years ago aboard of the long oared ship come eurycleia move the sturdy bedstead out of our bridal chamber that that room the master built with his own hands take it now sturdy bed that it is and spread it deep with fleece blankets and lustrous throws to keep him warm and so penelope is of course testing odysseus because she knows well that the bed cannot necessarily be moved um 
and Odysseus knows it too. Um, but what I think is playful about this text and, and, and rather brilliant is that this wife knows her true husband and um, she also knows how to, to get at him, right? And we've had plenty of other more recent texts, you know, feminist texts that, that, that are, you know, tr tell this story from Penelope's perspective. And so I'm not going to dig into them because we are going to um, at least this summer look at Obiama's text and orchestra of minorities um, as as a counter or an updating or a retelling but also a telling that's related to the Igbo people in Nigeria um, that'll be the focus this year but I just want to mention yes there are plenty of, of different of, of texts out in the world that that look at um, at this from Penelope's perspective um, <clears throat> Uh, but Penelope, you, you, we can think, you know, as, as if we're looking kindly on the text here, this is, this is um, um, someone, these are two people who know each other. And, well, the, and there's intimacy, intimacy is coming out here, um, despite the fact that it's coming out in challenges. Of course it comes out in challenges, because that's what Odysseus does all the time. Um, so putting her husband to the proof, but Odysseus blazed up in fury, lashing out at his loyal wife. Woman, your words, they cut me to the core. Who would could move my bed? Impossible task for even some skilled craftsman, unless a god came down in person, quick to land a hand, lifted it out with ease, and moved it elsewhere. And then he says, I built it myself. I built it around this olive tree. And so the symbology of the olive tree being at the center of the bedroom, the center of, of marriage there, um, of the bedchamber itself. Um, and at this, you know, demonstration of the knowledge of the bed, um, Penelope, of course, gives in. Um, and uh, we get some really interesting stuff in her, um, uh, from, from her here. So, living proof, Penelope felt her knees go slack, her heart surrender, recognizing the strong, clear signs of Odysseus offered, she dissolved in tears, rushed to Odysseus, flung her arms around his neck, and kissed his head and cried out, Odysseus, don't flare up at me now, not you, always the most understanding man alive. The gods, it was the gods who sent us sorrow. They grudged us both a life in each other's arms, from the heady zest of youth to the stoop of old age. But don't fault me, angry with angry with me now because I failed I failed at a glimpse to greet you hold you so in my heart of hearts I always cringed with fear some fraud might come beguile me with his talk the world is full of this, that sort cunning ones who plot their own dark ends remember Helen of Argos Zeus's daughter would she have sported so in a stranger's bed if she had dreamed that Achaea's sons were doomed to fight and die to bring her home again? Some god spurred her to do her shameless work. Not till then did, he, did her mind conceive that madness, blinding madness that caused her anguish, ours as well. So what I think is important here is from the beginning and and you know rhetorical history has this in the the encomium of he helen for example by gorgias um and it shows up again in the dialogues between gorgias and socrates and plato's works um what this is a moment of with penelope is a defense of helen and it's a counter from the beginning, and I'm, by the beginning, I mean the beginning of basically um, uh, ancient Greek literature, like in, in its fully formed um, texts that we have like this, and, and then Hesiod's works and days and th things like that from the same century. <clears throat> what I think is important is that the woman's perspective is there from the beginning. The idea that these like long diatribes, these rants that we've seen and that I've highlighted throughout the text, um, uh, uh, where, whether it's Eumaeus, whether it's Agamemnon, who blame women, Helen and all of her cursed kind. And um, Penelope is, is shrewd here, and she's saying, like, Helen could not have done this on her own. It was, as everything, inspired by the gods. She wouldn't have done it if 
she had her own wits and her own will about her own self, right? So the that kind of tension um, it exists in this discussion about Western civilization from the very beginning. Um, uh, it's not enough just to say that it's a sexist culture. It is a sexist culture. <laughs> um, that it's a, just a patriarchal culture. It is a patriarchal culture. But it is also to say that there is um, in the textual record itself um, plenty of places where women are standing up for themselves and maybe not being heard, but, but they are there, right? Like if we remember all the way back to Calypso earlier on in the text, right? Um, Calypso points out the double standard for goddesses right away um, when Hermes comes to tell her that she needs to give up Odysseus. So um, that um, gender tension is definitely certainly old. Um, and we can see it in other, you know, ancient Greek works like the play Lysistrata or something like that. Uh, just something to, to point out um, in the text here. Um, uh, so she goes on here. Um, but now, since you've revealed such overwhelming proof, the secret sign of our bed, which no one's ever seen but you and I and a single handmaid, Actorus, the son, the, the servant my father gave me. So actually class stuff, servitude, slavery, still right there, right? Um, Actress, the servant my mother gave me when I came, uh, who kept the doors of our room you built so well, you've conquered my heart, my hard heart at last. The more she spoke, the more a desire for tears welled up inside her breast. He wept as he held the wife he loved, the soul of loyalty in his arms at last. Joy, warm as the joy that shipwrecked sailors feel when they catch uh, sight of land. Poseidon has struck their well-rigged ship on the open sea with gale winds and crushing walls of waves, and only a few escaping, swimming, struggling out of the frothing surf to reach the shore, their bodies crusted with salt, but buoyed up with joy as they plant their feet on solid ground again, spared of deadly fate. So joyous now to her uh, the sight of her husband vivid in her gaze that her warm white arms embracing his neck would never for a moment let him go beautiful beautiful poetic image here and not without um uh you know like an embedded texture of of the rage and vengeance of poseidon in there as well right um, the union of the shipwrecked sailor and Penelope's desire as she's embracing Odysseus. Um, this is just beautiful, beautiful poetic work, even in translation, of course, right? Uh, and <clears throat> um, then Athena uh, had not thought of one, uh, had not thought of one more thing. Um, she held back the night and the night lingered long at the western edge of the world while in the east she reigned in dawn of the golden throne at ocean's banks um i mentioned this and i underlined it just because i was thinking of it and um, um a number of times this summer it's, it's it's just a repeated thing that's come up in, in this text a, a couple of times for me um subtly um uh, and 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 maybe a couple of other poems i'm thinking of john dunn's um um, poem, the All Prince's Eye poem, uh, um, with the two lovers in bed. Um, the Sun Rises, I think is the name of the poem, right? Um, and uh, the lover asking the sun to, to, to hold off, um, which, which comes from the metaphysical poets of the 17th century. It's a much later poem and something I can't go into in detail today. Um, but, but the when John Donne and these classics, uh, um, the, these authors that are so, you know, you know, enmeshed in the study of the classics, um, they make those gestures. It's just pulled right out of the classical world, right? The, those, um, these little subtle gestures of the request that the idea that a God can hold back the day, 
um, or only shine light on one group of, of, of lovers in that particular poem. I, I think that, um, uh, that you know, we, we can definitely see that kind of subtle aesthetic imagery um, all the way back here. Um, Dear woman, we have not, we have still not reached the end of our trials. One more labor lies. So Odysseus says to tell her this last thing, you know, as the sun's coming up. Dear woman, we've still not reached the end of our trials. One more labor lies in store, boundless, laden with danger, great and long, and I must brave it out from start to finish. So the go ghost of Tiresias prophesied to me the day I went down to the house of death to learn our best route home, my comrades and my own, but come, let's go to bed, dear woman, um, uh, as the, um, at, at long last, delight in sleep, delight in each other, come. If it's bed you want, reserved to Mel Penelope, <laughs> replied, it's bed you'll have uh, whenever the spirit moves, now that the gods have brought you home again t to native land. Um, you're a great and gracious host. Um, uh, you perhaps then appealing to um, some masculine desire whenever you want, she says. Um, uh, um, but since you've alluded to it, since a God has put it in my mind, please tell me about this trial still to come, she says. And... Odysseus says, why again? Why force me to tell you it all right now? Um, well, I'll tell you. And then he goes ahead and tells her, you know, right away. He's just gotten home and he's already telling her that she's going to have to leave again. Um, but uh, just to, to get it back out in, in the air here again, um, this is what Tiresias must do. This is why he can't, or sorry, this is what Odysseus must do. Uh, this is why he cannot just stay home. The prophet said that I must rove through the towns and t towns of men and that I must carry a well-planned planed oar until I come to a people who know nothing of the sea, whose food is never seasoned with salt, strangers to ship to all to ships, um, strangers all, excuse me, to ships with uh, their crimson prows and long slim oars, wings that make ships fly. He, and here is my sign. He told me clear, so clear, I cannot miss it. And I will share it with you now when another traveler falls in with me and calls that weight across my shoulder, to, um, a fan to winnow grain. To win grain. Uh, then he told me I must plant my or in the earth and sacrifice fine beasts to the Lord of the sea. Poseidon, a ram, a bull, and a ramping wild boar. This is an early version of the Suo Wei Torilia sacrifice ceremony. But notice how it's up in land, it's away from the sea. There's something about this text and what this text is saying is about um, uh, a kind of planting an embarkation inland. Um, now we could call it perhaps a form of colonization too, that this is where I'm going to plant my ore off with these new people. I'm going to go in a different direction. And perhaps this is why Virgil um, will take um, Aeneas as a, a another um, a refugee, well, well not from I mean, Odysseus isn't a refugee, right? He's just returning from the war. But a refugee from Troy, Aeneas, um, founds Troy in Virgil's Aeneid, right? So there's this going away and planting of something and starting something anew. And so I think if we go with Horkheimer and Adorno, um, the cr Jewish critics I talked about last, uh, my last um, uh, contextualized reading, and, and who I will come back to in more detail in a post um and in a full, full, fuller directed lecture, once we've been through these contextualized readings, um, I think that that's we can see the early roots of, of colonialism here. Um, then we get Odysseus and Penelope in bed together. Um, husband and wife confide in each other. They, they seem to talk all night, right? Um, uh, they're telling each other stories. 
um, uh, again, and it does seem like time has sort of like stood still a little bit, you know, the time of the late night, the holding off the, um, from uh, the page before to being in bed, um, telling each other stories. Um, and there's a lot of repeating going on here. Um, he tells about the Kikones, the Lotus Eaters, the Cyclops, how he visited Aeolus, um, tele, um, uh, Telepilus and the Last Dragonians, and Circe in the House of Death. This is kind of a wrapping up a narrative way that the poet is wrapping up the adventures, right? When we're coming to the closing of the, of the text. Um, and then, you know, after they've been able to have all of this discussion and make all of their love that they need to make, then um, uh, they have this one night together, right? And then Athena, her eyes afire, had fresh plans. Once she'd thought, she, once she thought he'd had his heart's content of love and sleep at his wife's side, straight away she roused young dawn from the ocean's banks to her golden throne to bring men light and rouse Odysseus too, whose ro who rose from his soft bed and advised his wife in parting. Dear woman, we both have had our fill of trials. You in our house weeping over my journey home, fraught with storms and torment, true, and I pinned down in pain by Zeus and other gods. For all my desire blocked from reaching home, but now we've arrived at our bed together, the reunion that we yearned for all these years. Look at after all look after the things still left me in our house. But as for the flocks those brazen suitors plundered, much I'll recoup myself, making many raids. The rest our fellow Ithacans will supply, till all my folds are are, are full of sheep again. Um, but I'm, right now I'm going to have to go see my father. We'll get to that in the next book. Um, and then, so he's, he says, climb to your lofty chamber with your women, sit tight there, see no one, question no one. Uh, at least until this is, uh, this business is, is covered with the families and the, the, those loyal to the suitors who've just been um, massacred. Um, but what it's, once again, you know, I've mentioned the colonialism thing, and for anybody who's saying like, like wait a minute, you know, trying to 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 be wishy washy on that, here is the intention again. You know, it was intended with the Kikones after the Trojan War. What did Odysseus do? He went in supposedly because they were allies with the Trojans and demolished and raided the city. Right, that happened. Um, that this has happened since the Trojan War. It was probably happening before the Trojan War. Um, uh, but his intention here, you know, there's nothing in, you know, Tiresias' statements that necessarily say you need to go, like, rape and pillage along the way before you plant this ore. Um, no, that, that's not what's said. But what Odysseus says is that I will make many raids along my way and I will bring back. So this is a fortune finding expedition that he's going on, um, <clears throat> whether Tiresias intended it or not. Um, and so Odysseus goes off um, uh, again um, uh, and leaves Penelope, uh, um, who is, uh, has waited 20 years t for one night. <laughs> um, uh, do with that what you will. We can th think about it more, but that's what the text says. So we will pick up again with another, the, our last contextualized reading in the next um, video. And then um, I'll do some wrap-up videos that are about um, that more current conversation, the critical conversation, um, the discor discourse around, um, around this text and around Odysseus from the critical theory angle. Thanks for listening, and we will catch up with you um, uh, shortly. Uh, have a great morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are, whenever you are. Bye.